I first met Karpal Singh, the Member of Parliament, in 1993. It was said that he was about to cross-examine the star witness in a murder case. Two policemen had murdered a detainee, it was alleged, in a lockup somewhere in Kuala Lumpur. We will call the star witness Sergeant X. Counsel for the first accused cross-examined the witness to no end. It took more than two hours and he was going round and round. Karpal Singh was sitting there looking at some books and shaking his legs, which is what he was wont to do, I was told. When his turn came to cross-examine the witness, these were the questions he asked. When were the two victims found dead? About 12.30. Who found them? I did. You were the first at the scene? Yes. Who was the last one who saw them alive? I did. At what time did you see them alive? At 9.30 in the morning. When did you first report to this police station for duty? On the 3rd of January, let's say, in the year 1991. When did the death occur? On the same day. Were you serving in this police station for a very long time? No, sir. I was in Penang and I was posted there. My posting ended on the 2nd of March and I travelled from Penang to Kuala Lumpur to take over the duties here. I see. I suppose you travelled from Penang to take over the duties the night before. No, sir. I left Penang, in fact, at 7 a.m. on this date of murder and I reached here at 8.45 and I reported to duty to my superior at 9 o'clock and I was assigned this role and I took over duties and shortly after 9 I came in, signed the books and had a look at the detainees at the cells at about 9.30. And you found them alive? Yes. Are you a superman? And the witness says, excuse me sir, what did you mean? Never mind. What car do you drive? A Proton Saga. How old is it? About four years old. And what was the car's capacity? 1,300 cc, sir. And you managed to get from Penang to Kuala Lumpur just under two hours? Yes, sir. I drove fast. How fast were you driving? Quite fast. Are you a superman? And he says, no. And that was it. He said, no further questions. And he said, there were other witnesses. The matter went on. And then came the time, I think a week later, when I also happened to be around, when there were arguments on whether the prosecution case had been proven and whether the defense had to be called. The other side counsel made a long and impassionate argument. Karpal Singh, as usual, sat there quietly. When it was his turn, he rose and he addressed the court and he said, the distance between Georgetown and the outskirts of Kuala Lumpur is 353 kilometers. If this man was driving the car, in an hour 45 minutes, he would have had to travel at 200 kilometers an hour since he was the last one who saw the victims alive. And there is no sign of when my clients, in fact, entered the lockup allegedly to murder them victim there is no nexus in place and in time and therefore the case has not been made out judgment was reserved and i heard some weeks later that defense was not called and the men were acquitted and discharged that is how you do cross-examination and that's what i learned from him you decide which is the weakest point and you attack it and you attack it quickly quietly fill it with details and put the witness in a position that he cannot come out of and put the judge in a position where the judge can make no other decision except the decision you want to. The second time I came across Karpal was when we were asked to work together on a file. I was assigned the first accused and Karpal was for the second accused. The charge was again murder. It was, I think, shortly before 1995. As you know, jury trials were abolished in Malaysia in January of 1995. I had tried to write once or twice to the Attorney General's chambers, asking them to reduce the charge from Section 300 to that of manslaughter to a lesser second limb charge. I wasn't successful. I spoke about this to Karpal as we entered the court. He said, I don't think the judge will give us an adjournment to write any more representations to the Attorney General's chambers. They are going to impanel the jury today and it's going to be difficult. I had earlier counted the number of people standing outside at the corridor as 14. These were potential jury members waiting to be impaneled. Now, under Section 206 of the abolished section in the CPC, every accused could object to four jury members without giving reasons and you had to give reasons if you wish to object to any other jury member. For example, you have to say that they were prejudiced against your client or they held views which were unacceptable or showed a lack of independence. And so 
the names of the juries were put in a box and the registrar of the court pulled out pieces of paper and read out the names and each jury member was brought in, was identified and as usual I took objections to four jury members and Karpal took objections to four more jury members. So I took objections to A, B, C and D and he took objections to E, F, G and H. The judge was about to empanel the jury when I had a suspicion. I rose, addressed the court and said, could I please have a few minutes to confer with Mr. Karpal? And the judge said, yes, fine, you can confer while the court is in session. I spoke quietly to Karpal and said, who are the people did you object to? And he said, well, I objected to E, F, G and H. I said, that's not H, that's D. You have one more chance. So Karpal rises and he addresses the judge and he says, my lord, uh, it appears that I'd only objected to three because my learned friend, Mr. G.K. Gunnison, had objected to Mr. A, Mr. B, Mr. C and Mr. D. That leaves me one more choice. The judge checked his records and said, I think you're right. Call one more jury member. And they called the jury member and Karpal Singh objected. There were only 14 members of the jury potentially present to be empaneled because we took objections to eight. There were only six. The law at that time was the number of jury members was seven. And so the court, in fact, adjourned the proceedings. So as we were about to leave, I offered him a drink at the canteen and it's a tradition that the seniors must pay for the juniors and I asked to be excused from the tradition so that I could have the honor of buying a drink for this great man. He smiled and he said, it's against tradition. I will pay, but you order me a black cup of coffee. And I did. He had a drink and he was in a hurry and he said, listen, I've got to go to another case. If you have any more rubber snakes, let me know. We will throw it at the court. And he laughed. A belly laughter it was. Some weeks later, our clients were successful in securing a lesser charge from the AG's chambers and they were after mitigation sentenced to, I think, eight years imprisonment each. The last time I saw Karpal Singh was, I think, on the first week of April, I was in the federal court and he was there. He had suffered a terrible whiplash injury in an accident and he was confined to the wheelchair. He couldn't move his hands, but he continued to fight and continued to appear in cases and he continued to speak. And then I heard that he had met a serious accident and had passed away. I wish to go and pay my last respects to Karpal Singh in Penang. It just happened that my car at that time began to give trouble. I didn't dare make that long journey. And therefore I called BMW and I said, my car is in for service. I need another car. And they said, I'm sorry, we're not giving you any car. I think the name of the company was Ingress. And I said, listen, I have to go and see YB Karpal and I have to pay my last respects. The guy on the other side said, could you hold on a minute? And then he said, we'll send you a car. And lo and behold, an hour later, a brand new 5 Series was sent over to us. And I drove there with my wife and a couple of friends. We managed to pay our last respects to Karpal. And as I was exiting Karpal's home, it was already quite late and we had to have dinner. I stopped at one of those eateries in Penang. I was approached by a lady and she said, I'm a journalist. And I would like you to tell me about Mr. Karpal. What is your impression of him? And the words shot out of my mouth even before I could put my brain into gear. And I recall saying, Karpal Singh is not a man. Karpal Singh is an institution and I think it will be a very long time, if ever, we can find someone to replace him. He was known as the Lion of Jalutung, the helper of the oppressed and the lawyer for the little man. I would consider it one of those great moments of honor for me to have had these brief encounters with Karpal. And I remember him as I would remember a hero, a Gandhi, a Nelson Mandela. That was how I remember Karpal. Thank you very much. Goodbye.